I'm going to be spending the next two weeks traveling through the Italian Alps of Trentino. When I signed up for this hiking boots thing, this is what I wanted to be right here by the Dolomite, see him up close. Starting in the town of Trento, I'll be working my way through the villages, lakes and mountains, finishing up at the famous peaks of the Dolomites. It's just the most gorgeous, picturesque town. All right, we're about to go into the mine. <laughs> Made it out. <laughs> I think I've got the black lung. <laughs> now, I first came to Italy in 2012 to do a road trip around the main tourist highlights. And whilst the Dolomites can hardly be described as a hidden gem, it's still great to visit a region of Italy that might not be at the top of everyone's itineraries. It's such a gorgeous morning. Pretty much every one of us just wants to jump in this lake. <laughs> Tingling your legs, it's instant death on the other side of this fence. <laughs> but this guy was giving us the roller coaster ride stunts. <laughs> so, the reason I'm heading to Trentino is I'm actually going to a conference there for travel content creators called Traverse 19, and that's on the middle weekend of this two week trip. So I bought my ticket for the conference and I got like the early bird ticket, so it only cost me £75. Then I got my flights from London to Verona and that only cost like 200 quid. And then I booked my own accommodation for the first week of the trip up to and including the conference. But with this ticket for the conference, you can sign up to all these like half day experiences in the week leading up to the event, getting to experience different activities and stuff in and around the town of Trento. Actually yeah, stand up in this bit here. But then you could also sign up for a post conference experience which would last five days. And these all had like different themes to them. Some are like water based, some are like high altitude. There's like, you know, wellness, culture. And the one I signed up for was called Hiking Boots and Swimsuits. <laughs> and the reason I went for that one is one, I love hiking and it's gonna be great to go hiking in the Alps. And two, it looked like I had a nice variety of activities rather than just sticking to the one theme. So it'll make more of an interesting trip for myself and ultimately more of an interesting video. Mm. <laughs> and for those five days, they take care of everything. Your accommodation, your transport, your food, the lot. So all of this is just for the price of that conference ticket. And this video is not really going to be about the conference itself. It's going to be more about our experiences in Trentino. I just want you to understand the backbone structure to the trip so you know what's going on and why there's all these different people sort of showing up and then disappearing throughout the video. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> like a bucket. But yeah, I'm super excited for the trip. Like, I've never been to this part of Italy before, and the Dolomites is something I've been wanting to see for years. So I can't wait to get in and amongst it, see some old friends, make plenty of new friends, and just have an awesome two weeks in the Italian Alps. So, let's go. From London, it's just a short two hour flight to Verona, and then a quick one hour train up to the town of Trento, where I'll be based for the first week. Okay, just got off the train, now I'm just gonna find my hotel. All right, this is the view from my balcony. Pretty freaking sweet. So I've got six nights here in Trento before I head further into the mountains, and I'm staying in Hotel Alba Monaco. And this place is only like 50 quid a night. Yeah, this is a this is a very very good start. <laughs> Didn't expect to have a balcony with this perfect view of the town. I basically went for one of the cheapest hotels in town, and yeah, it's worked out all right, I'd say. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to be doing in town is just a simple tour of the town. We're going to have a guided tour for an hour and a half. A bunch of the people from the conference can be on it as well. And guided tours are always a good thing to do when you first arrive in a place. It gives you like a foundation of knowledge and helps you get your bearings. So that's the plan for the day. We're easing ourselves into Trento. Welcome to Trentino! <laughs> so I'm back with Patrick and Anastasia, who loves being on camera so much. Oh my god. For the city tour, on the first stop is this castle, which we don't know anything about yet, but we will. The Buon Consiglio Castle is the most important castle in Trentino, and it was a residence of the Prince Bishops of Trento from the 13th century to the end of the 18th century. Construction was carried out over a few hundred years, resulting in an extraordinary variety of architectural styles within the castle. 
pretty incredible in here. Press one and listen. Huh? Learning about the castle. We were given an audio tour to teach us about the history, which basically results in a group of people looking like they've received a very serious phone call but getting really bad reception. The interior walls were covered in fresco mural paintings, one of which is the cycle of months created in the 15th century. It's famous for its accurate portrayal of the landscape, the economic activities, the habits and the fashion of medieval Trentino. Basically this town, Trento, is like a good hub for exploring the area. They've got every activity you'd imagine being offered when you're up in the mountains. It's a beautiful town, they've got old castles to explore. Obviously tons of cafes, tons of pizza and pasta everywhere. Tons of gelato, get amazing ice cream. So it's a really, really beautiful town to hang out in and use to explore the mountains. What you, you asked What's your name? Eduardo. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <the> kisses. <laughs> What's your name? Alan. Is this the best in town? Yes. Probably yes. yes. So, actually, I, um, I didn't try all of the ice cream. Yeah, just, just say yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and it's free. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> That's so good. So you were definitely in Italy now. So it's only Italian, so you know, we have some Italian right, In your name, Mario, <laughs> come to my ice cream shop and we're gonna make a pizza as well. <laughs> Morning from day two in Trento. We got, we got Charlie Keep Pocket Trailblazer here. <laughs> hey. Finally in one of the videos. I know, finally. Finally. It's been like it's what everyone's been years. crying out for for years, every day. <laughs> I know, everyone keeps always going, when are you guys doing a collab? I'm like, here you go, here we go. Uh, it's not some kind of cheesy collab, we're just in the same place, same time. Yeah, exactly. Today we are going to a gorge, that's what we're doing. Insert your generic TLC joke, but we're going to a waterfall. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stand behind a waterfall and climb around some waterfalls. And I think that's the plan. That's yeah, the plan. we don't really know what we signed up to. We're actually going to the gorge of Ponte Alto, which was just a short bus ride away to the edge of town. We'll be exploring the dams that were built on the River Fersner to protect the town and even get to walk behind one of the waterfalls. <laughs> he's gonna do this on film so I promise. And historically, the Fersina always represented a huge, a huge problem for the city of Trento because when uh, it uh, become bigger uh, with heavy rains and floods, uh, it would discharge uh, huge amounts of these rocks onto the city of Trento, submerging the farmland, literally hitting the houses with the rocks like bullets, destroying mills, uh, infrastructures arranged around the river and therefore since uh, uh, 1537 people from Trento uh, started, started trying to shelter themselves from the furious Fersina by building these dams. I feel it, I can feel it now. Feel the energy of the water. Yeah! <laughs> but after these uh, three centuries we have a final version of the dam that we're gonna see as our first step then we're gonna see a second one down there that was built in order to make the first one safer. It's so incredible, look at it. Just sheer power of what's going on down there. You get a little tingling in your legs, it's like, yeah, you just, oh, okay. it's instant death on the other side of this fence. But it's amazing. Absolutely epic. It was so, yeah. so cool. It was like something I've never really seen before. Okay, so we're back in town and what we're doing this evening is we're going to get the cable car all the way up there, have some drinks, get an amazing view of Trento. The sun's staying out, it's a pretty nice evening, but this view, so I thought it'd be nice, but it's absolutely gorgeous. But right here, 
we've got Steve from Belfast. Well, hey! What were you just asking? You're asking where James was. Yeah, where's James? <laughs> this is crazy James guy I always see on the YouTube channel. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. We've got our spritz here. I was going to be super woke and use my bamboo straw that Jamie gave me in Egypt. But they've already put the straw in, so it's still single use. So it's a complete waste of time. Oh well. Doing those long laps is quite disheartening. Only ever tried spritzer earlier. It's not really sour. Yeah, no. Big, big thumbs up. Switch to a beer. Cheers, cheers, Steve. All right, so there's a football pitch, so we're going to have a little kick around. Post drinking, obviously, it's the best way to do it. Mike wanted me to set him up for the volley, so I chipped it in. I thought he made perfect connection. He hit it hard, hit it well, but it went. And it's gone, hopefully not down to Trento, but it certainly cleared the fence. So. I think it went to Milano. <laughs> yeah, these American guys showed up and wanted to join in. Do you guys want a game? Yeah. So our little kick around turned into a bit of a match. So we won. Uh, last, it was like last goal win, so basically draw. So let's call it 5 4. Saw the keeper left a little bit of an angle at the far post, just slotted it home. Keeper with no chance, game over. That's great job. When did you score? We've got three, maybe? Three? three. 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 Yeah, hat trick. All of them nutmegging the keeper as well. Yeah. <laughs> Good game. Cheers, Cheers. Dave. <laughs> All right, good morning from Trento. Another beautiful day up here on the edge of the mountains. First thing I'm doing this morning is I'm heading to an old mine just outside of town. I think we go for a walk around the lake and then go inside it. And then after that, at one o'clock, I'm going on a helicopter ride. And that is going to be sick. Uh, it's a really nice day weather-wise, so hopefully the clouds stay away, stays clear, and we'll get an amazing view flying over Trentino. So first up was a tour of the mine which was just a short half hour drive up out of the valley to Lake Santa Colomba. So welcome, um, I'm Lara. I work for the Eco Museo Argentario. Um, it is a sort of landscape museum in all this area of the Monte Calisio Plateau. He is Maurizio. He is one of the best guys of the Eco Trentino. <laughs> Not only of the Eco Museum, but of Trentino and Italy and worldwide, yeah. maybe. <laughs> the main focus of this Eco Museum it is the, the mining activity during the Middle Ages, which caused uh, uh, an infinity of ores, like wells and. Uh, caves under the ground. This area has one of the largest concentrations of medieval mines in Europe. And one of the main things they were mining for was silver. Okay, those bears are not made by silver only. But without silver they didn't, they cannot sound like this. Silver is special for uh, music, for example. Mm -hmm. The flute, the orchestra yeah. is made by silver. So, okay. stop, okay. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to prepare to go okay. the, underground. The, Great. Only a little bit. Cool. <laughs> Been kitted out with these amazing hats. So we're looking like the, uh, the dwarves from Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. Ready to face the mine? Very ready. <laughs> Never been more ready. It's pretty hot in these things, it actually. Is, uh, <laughs> on a beautiful day like this. <laughs> Such a beautiful morning here. Just strolling around the lake, <laughs> dressed up in the weirdest clothes ever to go and find the mine. Right, we're about to go into the mine. <laughs> it's like Lord of the Rings when they're about to go into the mine. It's no mine. It's, in Lord of it's the a tomb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mind the basilisco. The basilisk. The basilisk. basilisk. <laughs> I'm getting the Harry Potter reference. Yeah. Yeah. The kids yesterday said that this is the Chamber of Secrets. So. Okay. <laughs> 
now our eyes are becoming adjusting. Yeah, adjusting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is the most difficult passage. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is an example of the mineral vein. It is quite useful now, but in the Middle Ages they didn't know all these wonderful things, and so they left it. You just see here in the back uh, a terrible tunnel going down. <laughs> I don't think there's any amount of money you could pay me to call into that. Uh, ten you euros. <laughs> ten <laughs> euros. <laughs> you can see also the uh, rock scratches mm -hmm. uh, made by tools. Not the basilisk. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> got a spider up here. A little spider's nest. To crawl through. This is quite small and it's not easy to uh, to get lost but in the bigger ones it's quite easy it's sort a sort of labyrinth you have to mm. to have a, a rope if you want to explore if not you stay inside yeah. <laughs> forever there's no mine it's a tomb <laughs> <laughs> the guy went a few steps ahead around the corner yeah. and started making scary noises at us <laughs> you okay? Yeah. <laughs> we want to get out to the sunlight. It's been so long. Which way? It's made it out. <laughs> I think I got the black lung. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just got back from the mine tour and it was fantastic. And the two guys we had really kind of made the experience. <laughs> no tip for this guide. We left him behind. Ciao! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just a fun little experience and we had to drive quite high up to the mountains uh, to get there to some of the smaller villages and it's making me excited for next week when I'll be leaving Trento and heading further up to the mountains, you know? Really enjoying the time here in Trento, but let's get in that helicopter. Okay, so it's time for the helicopter ride. The weather's absolutely perfect, so we should get an amazing view of the mountains and all the valleys. We're gonna go up in two groups of five. Don't know which order. <laughs> Are you excited? Yes! Prince Ali, fabulous, he, Ali, <laughs> How are you feeling, Shu? I'm a bit nervous. I've never done it before. It's quite small, isn't it? It's like for five people. Oh, okay. I was about to say that's what she said. Yeah. It's quite small, isn't it? It's quite small, isn't it? <laughs> Michael and Philip are figuring out a way to fairly decide who gets the front seat to take the best pictures. Why do you want okay. it most? Come on. Yeah, state your case. It's the front seat and no seat, really. Philip. Because I'm important. <laughs> <laughs> VIP. Spin the wheel. <gasps> Tensions are rising. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I was saying to you before, and it's like, don't worry about helicopter rides, they're really smooth and gentle. This guy did the opposite of that. Like, we did the slight takeoff, and then he was like, you ready? And then he slammed the accelerator, and we went flying so fast through the air. This guy was giving us the roller coaster ride stunts. Pilot was a bit crazy, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's like I'm never done. <laughs> and down a curve and round. And then everything felt like it was flying from your hands and your tummy went up. So you know when you go on a roller coaster, your tummy just kind of goes like this. But maximize. So it's less about looking at the view and more just going. Oh, oh my god. god. It was crazy. Yeah. I kind of thought we might die a couple times, but we didn't. Yeah. So that was awesome. <laughs> it was so fun. <laughs> yeah, I've never gone on a helicopter tour like that. Yeah. No. 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 We're all just buzzing big grins on our face. Apart from Phil, who's hung over. How are you feeling, Phil? Let's uh, <laughs> survive. Film, film. Guys, I'm meant to look enthusiastic and be like, that was awesome. But 
Holy shit. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, probably, I'm probably a few tones paler than usual right now. Uh, you know, it's always good to have lunch twice. <laughs> I just, I'm dying to see our slow-mo shot that we've got Yeah, I need to do it quickly. Yeah, yeah, let me. So, whilst the other half of the group was having their flight, we thought, wouldn't it be really cool if we got like a really cheesy but badass kind of Michael Bay shot where we're strutting towards the camera and the helicopter's landing behind us and if we filmed it in slow motion, it's gonna look so sick. So we put the camera down, went to do like a practice run and I said to everyone, right, just look beyond the camera and just strut like you own the freaking world. And so we went three, two, one and walked. And then we were going to have a look at the footage first and sort of see whether the shot was lined up properly, but we suddenly saw the helicopter coming into land. So we turned around and ran back to our position. And the crew that were working there was sort of waving us like, no, get back, get back. And so we just quickly turned around, saw the helicopter come into land, and just went three, two, one, and just strutted. Having no idea whether this was going to work or not. But then we watched the footage back, and by pure luck, it was time to perfection. Like it looks all right when you watch it at normal speed, but when you play it back in slow-mo, it looks so badass. So because I'm here for the conference, all the activities I'm doing are sort of organized for us. So I'm now just going on like a little random adventure for the afternoon since I've got the afternoon off. Afternoon off, it sounds like I'm working. <laughs> um, and I basically saw this cool looking, almost looks like a temple or something. It looks like a Roman ruin. I don't think it is, but it's called Dos Trento. I saw it perched up on the hill. I was like, that looks cool. I'm gonna go check it out. So that's what I'm doing and the path's closed. <laughs> Gonna have to go the other way up by the road. It's like a good little practice for my hiking week next week. Oh, especially it's right in the middle of the day, so you know, sun's at its strongest right now. Boiling hot, the hottest day we've had here. And so I've decided to walk up here. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be worth it though. Oh yeah, it's just through here. It wasn't too long a walk actually. This is cool. You can't go up there. Fail. Ah, I was looking forward to that. I can go underneath. Cool. Seems like it's some kind of war memorial. Lots of dates of 1916, so some guy from the First World War maybe? Turns out this is a monument and gravesite for Cesare Battisti, who was born in Trento and fought in World War I at the Italian front against the Austro-Hungarian army. He was captured and killed in 1916, and is apparently still to this day considered a national hero in Italy. There are other monuments for him in Rome, as well as streets and piazzas named after him all around Italy. Back down in town, Friday evening's opening party for the conference was fast approaching. So before going for some food, I quickly registered for the weekend's event. So this is our welcome pack at the registration. Ah, my pass. Well, I've got meal tickets for the next two days and lunch during the conference. And then, oh, my guest pass. There we are. It says influencer. Um, I would never describe myself as an influencer because when I hear the word influencer, I think of the word twat. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. And finally, we have... Just wine? This wine? Grappa. That's strong. Oh my god, did you have some? Yeah. Yeah, strong. Okay, so before we go to the opening party, I'm gonna get some food with some of the other people from the conference. Grazie. 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 So is this becoming oh, your local, like, Joe? This is definitely my local. Yeah, like Great pasta, really yummy, traditional Italian. What more do you want, hey? <laughs> they look like really good pints. Oh no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little video of the bubbles. <clears throat> So I'm about to try this local dish called lasagna. Let's tuck in. Mm, it's fucking hot. 
<laughs> it's actually really nice. Of course I did. Yeah. <laughs> Good recommendation, Joe. Well done. <laughs> That's your thumb. Yeah. Okay. I'm hosting the grappa. This is grappa. I already explained to them how delicious the grappa is and they have to try it immediately. I've never had grappa. Have you not had grappa? Are you in the drink? No. It's so is it, this is a local drink here? Yeah. 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 41%. 41? Yeah. Here. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, how do you pronounce that? <laughs> the dick? This is the dick. We're going to taste the dick. <laughs> we should play it like well, whoever can keep a straight face wins. Straight. Oh, the challenge is to have it and keep a straight face. Oh god. Just a little sip. Yeah, just do a little sip. Whiskey, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's like whiskey. whiskey. It's beautiful. Oh, well done. <laughs> he did it. He did it. Ooh. Oh. Wait, are we good? Are we done? <laughs> Have yeah. we got it? Have we got the shot? Who's about donkey? Where's it? I don't always drink oh. the dick, but when I do, I have a great time. Are <laughs> oh, you going to do a straight face challenge? The dick, oh, it's a very haunting taste. <laughs> <laughs> it really is like... We are on our way to the opening party. Yeah, are you excited, Stevie? Yeah, yeah. mate, can't wait. Can't wait. It's going to be like 300. <laughs> Maybe 400 in influencers people. in the one room. <laughs> 400 twats in one room. <laughs> <laughs> the venue looks super cool. It's like these old road tunnels underneath the hill or something. You can hear the sound of people subscribing to each other's channels already. <laughs> Now, I said this video wasn't going to be about the conference, but just to give you a quick idea of what the hell we're all doing here, Traverse 19 is a conference for travel content creators. So that's fellow YouTubers, bloggers, photographers, Instagrammers, podcasters, you name it. Being around 400 people who sort of live a similar lifestyle to you, uh, they just get what you're doing is uh, so inspiring and so motivating. The sessions that were on all weekend covered everything from the creative side of what we do, to the business side, marketing, mental health and wellness, and loads more. It was interesting to note like throughout the entire week basically, how hard people were trying not to use the word influencer because everybody hates the word influencer. Because when you think of influencers, you think of those sort of vain narcissistic people on Instagram who are projecting these sort of unrealistic perfect life just to get you to buy some products, you know? And that's not what anyone at this conference was about. We're here because we're passionate about travel and we're passionate about creating content. And the majority of people there, and certainly for me, are passionate about being honest about travel experience because it isn't all perfect sunshine and rainbows, you know? I love my life, but it's not always easy and there's a lot of work that goes into it. The highlight of the weekend was an award ceremony for content creators held in a beautiful art museum. And better still, I was even nominated for Best Cinematic Video. Yeah, didn't win. It's just an honor to be nominated with amazing nominees. Despite it being a very full on weekend, there wasn't any time to rest afterwards as we were straight into our post event adventures. This is where we went off in groups of 12 to experience different sides of Trentino in the next five days. The one I've got on is called From Hiking Boots to Swimsuits. I think by the end we're going to be right up close to the Dolomites, which I can't wait for. It's something I've been looking forward to seeing for years. So it should be a fantastic climax to this incredible, amazing and very random trip that I've been doing for two weeks. It was just a quick drive to our first stop, Lago di Caldenazzo, where I wasn't exactly bursting with energy for the first activity. To be honest, I'm just like, I'm just shattered. Because uh, it's just physically, mentally and emotionally draining. But for all the best reasons, it was one of the best weekends I've ever had. Yeah, I was a bit hungover too. So whilst the others went off paddleboarding, I had a better idea to wake myself up. It's 
So we're about to go sailing on the lake. On Caldonas Lake. Okay. You are in Caldonas Lake? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We are ready to go boat sailing. Nice. You're all ready, I think. Yeah, yeah. I am super ready. I've never done it. I've done it before, but not the That's work. Great. <laughs> you like wine? You like wine? Too much wine. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Yeah. We got it. Go boat. <laughs> I thought it was going to be my day off, but it's going to be wine on the boat. <laughs> That's a Cinderella boat. <laughs> That's a Cinderella boat. <laughs> Cinderella boat, yes. Gas, gas. And now we have wind in south. Next hour, the wind will be strong. So we open only one sail, the rear sail. Here we go, guys. Yes, it's up. We've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> We are spending the afternoon just sailing around this beautiful lake and so gorgeous and so relaxing and it's exactly what we needed after that heavy weekend with the Traverse Conference. How long have you had this boat, Max? We have the owner. Yeah. A three day. Three years. Three years, so three yeah. days. <laughs> Here on the lake. I just got it yesterday, but yeah. you know. Oh. Just as we get into it, the storm came in, so we had to come straight back in. That's the way it goes when you're in the mountains. We're spending the next two nights on the lake adjacent to this, in a little town on the edge of Lake Levico. Now that looks like a challenge. It's just the most gorgeous, cute, picturesque town. If you someone had to imagine like a fairy tale version of a town, it's kind of what it's like. All the little waterfalls, the streams, the churches, the clock towers, and they got all these little like flower settings and giant books and stuff. It's beautiful. Alright, good morning from Lake Levico. It's day two for us out here on the lakes. Feeling so great to be here. I mean, it's just, it's just stunning to sort of wake up to things like this every day. It's beautiful. You smell the cut grass. It smells so good. Today's gonna be quite a chill day. We're gonna go for a walk around the lake. Our tour is long about eight kilometer, two hour or half. The lake is long about three kilometer, large. One kilometer and deep, uh, uh, 38 meters deep. It's such a gorgeous morning. Pretty much every one of us just wants to jump in this lake because it's so crystal clear and beautiful. Let's do it. The name is Chilidonia. It's the natural, it's the natural. Natural hand moisturizer um, from the lakes of Trentino. <laughs> yeah, a guy just pointed out some uh, art in the trees. Like a local artist has been uh, painting some owls in like the gaps in the trees. It's like, one of those things you could easily just walk past, but if you've got someone who lives here, they can go, hey, check that out. Oh no! Well, we've just walked out to this beautiful little beach on the lake, and pretty much every single one of us think the same thing. Why didn't we bring our swim shorts? We could probably easily spend all day just chilling out here, have a picnic, go swimming, but we've got other things to do. We're now going to have lunch by the lake and it's at a public restaurant so if you're visiting Trentino you can come in yourself but for us we've been so spoiled they set up a table on the pier. So we're sitting in this ridiculous location to do some wine tasting and we've been given some souvenir glasses to drink out of. They are plastic though so it doesn't really work for the cheers. Like where's yours? All right listen, listen to this. <laughs> cheers! <laughs> 
Oh, <laughs> you haven't heard this laugh yet. <laughs> It's the best thing of the time. <laughs> in Trentino, when we say Trento Doc, we mean only sparkling wine, and it's uh, one of uh, our most important wines we produce. At the moment, uh, Trentino produces uh, among 900 million bottles, and uh, this uh, product has a long history in our region. So she explained to us that they produce 900 million bottles of this every year. And so at this lunch, we're going to sample each and every one of them. Okay. Salute, amico! Hey, Joe's going to call for a speech. <laughs> I'm going to do some sound effects. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Is this live foley? So this is, yeah, live yeah. foley happening, right? Three, two, one. <laughs> Nice, <laughs> sorted, and that's how it's done. That'd be quite fun. Yeah, yeah. the viewers. Like, I think it might. <laughs> So we finished up our ridiculously delicious meal and now we're going to go for a swim in the lake. Go, 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 yes! approaching five o'clock we had to quickly freshen up from our swim because it was time for the next activity on our hiking tour where we were driven to a vineyard. What are we doing now? Um, well we've just finished wine tasting and so now we're headed to do some wine tasting. <laughs> okay. What are we doing tomorrow? Uh, beer what? tasting. Beer tasting. <laughs> <laughs> and this is an adventure tour. And what's the name of the tour? I'm gonna yeah. carry my hiking boots and my swimsuits yeah. to beer tasting. <laughs> yeah, to yeah, beer yeah, tasting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, Giorgio, the owner of this uh, micro winery. Yeah. I and my brother started to make uh, wines 10 years ago. Rosé and uh, uh, red wine. <laughs> Perfect. Put it back. <laughs> <laughs> So this post-conference trip is a bit different than what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be hiking in the mountains for four days, but you can't complain one bit because we've been spoiled rotten. And now we're in this gorgeous vineyard tasting wine, so yeah, just got to roll with it sometimes. Do you usually drink wine? Yes. Yes. All day. All day. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So they're explaining that this wine, the way that they mature it, down under the water. Yeah. Under the water. So for, uh, they get like 500 bottles in a steel container. Yeah. And they put it 20 meters down in the lake that we were swimming in today yeah. for two years to let it mature. So if you go snorkeling down there, so if you go you snorkeling might, down there, you might find some. True, I never thought of that. We need to go back. We need some, <laughs> we need some snorkel gear some and snorkel gear. Yeah. Some scuba gear. It's 20 meters. Need some scuba gear. Yeah. Actually, a free diver. Did he say it's only like five in? Italy that do it, or five in the world that do this? In the world. Oh, the wineries that do this. There's wow. only five places in the world That's amazing. <laughs> that do it this way. That's amazing. Salute. Basically, we've upgraded our glasses from the last uh, wine tasting. Listen to this. Wow. <laughs> That's like a bucket. Let's not do, let's do that again. Thank you. All right, let's just, just, just the tips. <laughs> All right, here we go. Cheers. That's better. That's better. <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. Now we got Jesse. the <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So you know, we're having a lot of fun at the winery here, tasting the different wines, enjoying life. But there's a beautiful story behind this winery because the guy and his brother run it, they opened it after their parents died. So it's kind of partially a memory for them. But then just at the end then he brought out one last rosé and he told his most beautiful story. This rosé was in dedication to his mother and his grandfather because his grandfather went blind at 25 so when his mother was born his grandfather never got to see his mother, never got to see him. 
And so this rose is called Gabriella, named after his mother. And the picture on it is like embossed, so it's you know it's not braille, but it means that anyone who's blind can you know touch and feel the picture and get a sense of you know what the picture looks like. So it's just the most touching, beautiful story just came out of nowhere. You know we're all here having a good time. It's like the guy said, it's like the culture behind the wine. It's the stories behind the wine, and that's what makes this place really special. Gabriella, 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 Gabriella. beautiful. Well, we're just driving to our next destination and then we're on this waterfall and we're all like, stop! <laughs> Jessica is happy. <laughs> we're now on the last two days of the trip and we began by driving for over an hour to finally be at the foot of the Dolomites. Okay, we've just arrived in the next town and checked into this gorgeous, cute little room. It's not that big, but it's beautiful. Got the uh, Dolomites up there, that's where we'll be hiking around for the next two days. See a few cows, obviously. We've got a lovely balcony view out here. But the mountains are that way, but it's still a gorgeous view of the town. Just around through, it kind of reminds me of Grindelwald in Switzerland, and I love Grindelwald, so yeah, just gonna get settled in and go explore. Fresh mountain water. <laughs> so we're just having a little wander around the town, get our bearings, get acquainted. <laughs> it's bloody gorgeous around here. Oh, I found my next house. <laughs> That's a bit big for you. It's your size. <laughs> it is a bit big actually, to be fair. One of the nice things when you're in a group is like <laughs> some of us have been to the Alps a lot before. Yeah, Other people say first time in the Alps, and so it's fun seeing their <laughs> reactions. You said it's your first time in the Alps. It is. is it everything you imagined? Everything I've imagined. It's like a storybook. It's like, you know those like gorgeous little towns that you see like in a storybook? Yeah. This is how I feel. This is how I feel about this place. Like, <laughs> it's pretty. Like, almost too pretty. It's insane. <laughs> really Freaking awesome. love it, man. Yeah, so cute. Like oh. We are here in Mezzano, which is called Mezzano Romantica because it's the most uh, romantic place of our valley. This town is famous here because it has about uh, 30 pieces of art done with uh, the wood. And this map, uh, you can take it like a treasure map, <laughs> and so you can walk around the small streets and ways of the town and try to find uh, all the pieces of art. And are you related to Dave? Because you guys... <laughs> <laughs> Secretly cousins. <laughs> Growing up, my family used to go to the Alps in Switzerland a lot. Very lucky to go on holiday there as a kid. We go like every couple of years, just in the summer, just for hiking. So I almost feel very at home right now. It's beautiful little villages up in the mountains. So peaceful, so relaxing. And we've got more gorgeous wood art right here. After we'd finished exploring the village, we drove straight up out of the valley to a mountain hut where we'll be having lunch before starting this afternoon's hike. We're now properly up in the mountains. You know, the cowbells, got beautiful fields full of flowers. We've obviously got cows with the cowbells. And just, yeah, another perfect spot for lunch. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. <laughs> Yeah. And then again in the middle. Oh, that's beautiful. Just filled ourselves up with a massive meal at the mountain hut. Absolutely stuffed. Uh, we're getting spoiled here with just the, the food and drink in general. So is this a traditional dish? dish? But then on the other hand, of course. This is our traditional dish of this valley. It is made of mushrooms, polenta, sausage, and tozella which is a fresh cheese made of cow milk and this uh, grilled in a little bit of butter and a little bit of salt. Mm. <laughs> Look yeah. at that swirl. There you go. It's like, oh, put it here. Twist it. Oh no, put it in. Okay, oh no. Oh, so you the flower. I don't. I think you probably could eat the flower. Uh, yeah. We're basically just <laughs> fucking around in the field, <laughs> getting yeah. silly shots, doing it for the gram. 
Wait, what? Lady, how you feeling? No, I failed as well. This shit job. It went back in my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Should we go another one? More people. Instagram versus reality. We were going to go on a hike to a suspension bridge, but apparently it's shut because of the wind. Doesn't seem that windy, but we're going to go for another short hike to a beautiful viewpoint or something like that. <laughs> it's a weird thing when you're sort of on a press trip rather than your own trip. You're not 100% sure what you're doing all the time, but it's nice. It's nice being surprised to see where you end up, you know. Didn't know we were going to be eating in a beautiful mountain hut right by the Dolomites today, so yeah, it all works out in the end. <laughs> we're in prime gladiator opening shot territory here, so I think we've got to give it a go. We're running low on time, so we're just going to keep going for a little bit more, but we have come out to this amazing clearing. You know, weather conditions aren't perfect for like filming and all that, but for experiencing it, it's fine. All right, I'm about to Instagram the shit out of the Dolomites. Okay. Yeah, I'm basically gonna film a fake tourism ad for Visit Trentino. I don't even know how to do this. You just frolic, yeah, there you go. You, you need a bit of wind, you need to flap it a bit. You need to frolic. All right, here we go. Visit nature. Visit beauty. Visit life. Visit yourself. Visit Trentino. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, this is and that's be how you Instagram, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Well, just before we go beer tasting, the driver took us to this lake. We're like, oh, okay, yeah, let's go check it out. And then we get here, and it's like, wow. <laughs> the reflection is perfect. The water is crystal clear. And the dolomites going in the lake. It's magical, so definitely worth a little stop. Thank you, Andy. Oh, beautiful. So, so nice. I think this is uh, probably the best view of the day, and we've had some very good ones today, but this tops it. Drove back to the village of Mazzano to visit a brewery. You can start with a beer in the hand. Yes. yes. <laughs> he gave us a quick talk about the history and how they make the beer, but really, it was just a good chance for all of us to relax and hang out after another busy but fun and very random day in Trentino. You just feel like the group's really starting to bond now, everyone's starting to gel, and the best way to exemplify this was uh, when we were at the lake, I took a picture, just quickly snaps either to put it on Instagram, whatever, and we're now trending amongst the group, fuck off Carl. So that's why I feel like everyone's just coming together, and it's, not, it's nice that I can bring people together in hatred for my, you know, Instagram skills. Fuck off Carl. Fuck off Carl. <laughs> Fuck off, Carl. Fuck off, Carl. <laughs> 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 Fuck off, Carl. 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 Well, good morning. This is our last full day here in Trentino, and we're going to finish it off by going for a hike to one of the most famous viewpoints of the Dolomites. I think the place is like a ski run in the winter, but during the summer you can go for a hike up there, and you'll see the mountains are right beside you. And the sky's looking pretty blue today, so we should have some really good views. So hopefully, it's going to be a lovely end to our amazing time that we've had here in Trentino.
we've just driven out of town up to the foothills of the mountains, ready to do a final proper, and probably only proper hike. Um, these guys are over here way more prepared than us, so either those guys are going to do some rock climbing, which is why they got the high vis vests and helmets, or they're just really shit at hiking. Basically, when I signed up for this hiking boots thing, this is what I wanted to be right here by the mountains, by the Dolomites, see them up close. So, yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be a good hike, it's going to be a good morning, and good final day with the group. I did, I did. <laughs> yeah, this is me. This is going to be me. What I want to compare is the guy from the UK with the girl from the Caribbean. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> In terms of what they're wearing. Like, I'm so the hard difference, well. can you tell the difference? <laughs> Shorts and a t-shirt, and Shay's wearing everything. Everything, <laughs> everything. That's the difference. And man. I'm too hot and Shay's cold. I'm cold, I'm freezing. <laughs> so hot. Well, we're getting higher and closer. So the mountains just starting to tower up above us now. Clouds are clearing. It's just beautiful. I want to get up there, man. <laughs> I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to be close to it. I want to feel it. I want to almost get, be able to touch it. <laughs> I don't know if we've gotten that close, but yeah, I know what you mean. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got our first snow. Let's cause some trouble. <laughs> I like how you can't scream because your voice is gone. I know. <laughs> I haven't seen snow in so long. Ooh. Who's coming up? No idea. Who's no coming up? No oh. 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 Unlucky. <laughs> there you go. You can't move. <laughs> Love the snow. We made it this far, which is great. <laughs> Look at the views up here. Incredible. Well, we're literally at the base of the mountains now. There's a little dip down, but yeah, we're at the foot of the Dolomite. Oh, I'm so, I'm so happy. <laughs> this is just exactly what I wanted, as I keep saying. They've got a very different look to like the Alps I've been to before in Switzerland. These are like very jagged, like sharp teeth. Whilst, you know, in Switzerland, it's more like big, epic rocks, you know? I could pretty much spend all day just hanging out here, admiring the view. Taking it all in, getting some nice shots. Just, I'm done basically, I'm done. <laughs> Perfect end to the trip, amazing view, gorgeous weather. Don't need anything else, just stay here the rest of the time. Love it. What do you think, guys? Loving it, <laughs> loving it. It sucks. <laughs> We're like, woo! <laughs> I'm a bit hungry, so I'm having a snack. <laughs> Greta, hug! <laughs> We all walked back down from the mountains feeling very content and just so lucky to have such good weather for the climax of our trip. And we then stopped at another mountain hut for lunch and some celebratory beers. Cheers! How big is that wine you just ordered for you? <laughs> it's all for me, guys. Don't touch it. I just need a straw. There you go. I just need a straw. Then, before we went back to the hotel, we drove to another ridiculously beautiful viewpoint just to top off our experience. It's one of those trips where it's not quite been what we expected, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. It's just been a bit different, but we've rolled with it. We've had such a good time. We're saying over and over again, we're spoiled and rotten. And when you're in a place as beautiful as this, you'll just have to go with wherever they take you. One of the other things to know about this trip is that we barely scratched the surface with what there is to do in Trentino because whilst we were on our trip, there's all the other groups off doing their thing and every now and again you check social media and see the things that they're up to and you end up just getting major FOMO about what they're doing even though we're having an amazing time ourselves. So it's definitely a region I want to go back to because there's just so much more there to do. And on a more personal note, this trip kind of felt like a major milestone for me because it was like partially like a recognition and celebration of everything I've been working on with these travel videos all these years. But rather than just patting myself on the back and saying, hey, I've made it, I came away with like so many ideas and inspiration about how I can move things forward, how I can build and improve while still staying true to what I want to do. You're up for an award, aren't you? 
Oh, you shouldn't have brought that up, <laughs> Bo Carl. <laughs> And the people as well. I mean, I said in the Antigua film, I'm very new to this sort of content creator community, even though I've been doing the travel videos for years. But the friends I've made, I feel like I've known them my entire life, even though I've actually only met them once or twice. And we just get on so well together, have such a good laugh, and share the same passions and interests. And now it's just like I'm always counting down the days till I get to see these guys again. I don't feel like such a high, how do you find it? Oh my god. You could turn that screen around. <laughs> Go behind it. <laughs> Just top, top, top camera tip. And as for what's coming up next, well, at the start of September, I did a sort of random mystery adventure tour in Catalonia in Spain with their tourism board. And I was only away for a few days, but we did some amazing stuff. So that video should be coming out pretty soon. It's one of the best skies I've ever seen. It's incredible. And then also in September, I hosted my first tour in Morocco. And this was something new for me where I'd worked with Intrepid Travel to create a bespoke tour, and then I put it on sale to people who follow my channel. And we had a group of 14 of us going around, and we just had the best time going around Morocco. It was such an amazing tour. The guide we had was incredible. It was one of the best trips I've ever done, and I just can't wait for you guys to see that video. It's gonna be something really special. So yeah, that's about it. So I just want to say thank you so much to Visit Trentino for organizing an incredible trip. And of course, everyone at Traverse, the people who work there and the entire community, I love all you guys and hope to see you all again very soon. So like in summary, as a group, Fuck off, Carl!